Matt Tidd. In Chapter 1 of Career Mapping, Matt explained his NASCAR ladder system. In Chapter 2, he revealed little-known secrets about the true and surprising demands of stock car racing. Now, in Chapter 3, learn how year after year, dollar after dollar, and challenge after challenge, Matt has built a matrix of success to help him visualize and master his future. Matt Tiff. So now we're going to take a look at my uh, position in racing right now. I'm in the regional and national late models, so already in just a few years, I'm already halfway through uh, to getting to the NASCAR series. Now, it's going to take a lot of uh, personal sacrifices and funding to get to that point, but it is well worth it in the end. So now we're going to take a look that's going to compare this series, the challenges, and the annual amount of money per year. Now the series I'm running in now is the ASA Midwest Tour, which will be for this year and next year. And the challenges are the competition pressure. And that is because the people in these races have either formerly raced in NASCAR or their family with people who have raced in NASCAR, so they might be as talented or better than the people in there now, it's just they didn't get the opportunities that uh, could work out for them. And we're gonna see $150,000 per year, but at this time, it's not just one sponsor that, can, uh, that counts for all $150,000 normally, it's broken up into pieces uh, so that it's not one large amount. And we're going to see in 2012 and 2013 a move into the NASCAR K&N series and possibly the ARCA series. And again, this goes back to the funding issue and time management, and that is balancing your time through all the different series that you would be running. And we're going to see a large jump of annual money per year due to the fact of the pit crews that are there every weekend and the, uh, the amount of cars that is needed for the series. And in 2014 and 15, we're going to see the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. And we're going to see a lot more challenges in this section. Again, the funding, but at this time, I'm going to be graduating high school and possibly entering college. And with the business and marketing, we're going to see a lot of relationships here where it's really going to count that I have those relationships with people in business to get the uh, highest relationship I can to uh, support myself through the series. And then working with TV, that's going to be because of the fact that they are, are all televised now. And then relocation. And to have a shot in NASCAR, to have the best opportunity to make it in, most of the drivers will move to around Charlotte or Concord, uh, North Carolina. And this is just because it is, everything is centralized in NASCAR right around the Charlotte area. And we're going to again see a large annual increase again because of the pit crews and the amount of trucks in this case needed for the year. Then the NASCAR Nationwide Series in around 2016 and 2017. And again we're going to see the funding but then the college education balancing college and my racing life and then competing against NASCAR Sprint Cup Series drivers. Because of the high competition in this, some of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series drivers such as Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards will come into this series and race in, to, be, uh, to run more races that weekend. So they have much more experience than the drivers in, who race the full-time nationwide series would uh, because of the experience that the cup drivers would have. And again, it's a very large annual increase when we get to this point. And now finally we get to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, and we're going to see it's 2018 through 2023. Now why we did the five-year span here is because this is about the time that it takes to get to the to very competitive level on NASCAR. It would just be like anybody joining the NBA. Most of the people getting in there right away are not going to be superstars. It just doesn't happen. So it takes time to develop the relationships and what you have with the teams to get to the most competitive level um, at that point. And we're going to see the skill development now, and that's because it is such a competitive series that actually in qualifying, which is where they will run two laps to set the field for the race, some of the races it'll be less than a half a second between first and 43rd. Now if you think of that much on the track, that's just about that much. So if you mess up that much, then that is going to be depending if you start the race or if you're going home that weekend. 
and personal sacrifices, that's racing 38 out of the 52 weekends in, uh, of the year, and that's traveling all across the country. It's not just in the south or in the north, that's going all the way to California and Florida to New York. And we're gonna see a huge increase to $20 million a year because it is, they have so much research going into these cars and all the testing and um, development that goes into these cars at this time. Matt's Matrix of Challenges, an essential tool for navigating his future. Next, in the fourth and final chapter of career mapping, Matt identifies critical keys to success in two essential categories. Anyone with the vision of becoming a champion needs to see this. Click the link in the center of this page. Mobile users, search for Matt Tift Career Mapping Part 4. Thanks for going fast with Matt Tift.